And he told me to minister this, he said, because other people are experiencing this as well. And then he gave me a solution. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because people are wanting to do right for God. They're wanting to live right for God. They're wanting to be better for themselves as well. And they're trying everything they know, and it just seems like it's just a merry-go-round. I'm, I'm, I'm trying everything I know, but it doesn't seem like I'm really getting anywhere. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know, like Paul said, I know what to do, but I don't do what I know I'm supposed to do. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And the Lord said something to me. As a matter of fact, he told me, I want you to minister to the people. Usually, I just, uh, he picks three people to come and help minister. He said, no, I want everybody to just be ministered to today. Everybody just be ministered to. Because people are going through things in their minds and, and in their hearts, and it's just... I just don't know what's wrong with me. Some people are like, you know, if I knew what was wrong, then maybe I could fix it. So the Lord said that everybody has basically the same testimony. And it's just simply this. I'm just tired. I'm just tired. How do we become so tired that virtually everything we do seems to be a struggle? Everything we do is a struggle. I wake up. Before I can even say thank you, Lord, I'm thinking about everything I need to do. I don't even want to go here. I don't even feel like getting out of the bed. And it's not the enough sleep, got enough sleep, but it takes more. I'm just tired. Word of the Lord says in Galatians 6, 9, and let us not be weary, tired, fatigued, worn out in well-doing for in due season. We shall reap if we faint not. People in general, whether they are Christians or not, want to do what is right. But again, it's a struggle. It's not a fight. It's a war. That makes us weary, fatigued, tired. Too weary, in fact. To do what is right many times. Romans 7, 21 through 25, Paul is saying here, so listen, after everything I've been through, after everything I've gone through, all that I have noticed and experienced in my life, I I find it to be a law. This is just a law, a rule of action of my being that when I want to do what is right and good, Evil is ever present with me and I am subject to its insistent demands. I want to do right. I know what's right to do. But every time I I know to do what's right, evil is right there and insists that I do what it wants me to do. And I can't fight because, listen, mentally, spiritually, financially, every league, I'm just... Tired. I'm just tired. And God sees this and He knows it. Verse 22 For I endorse, I'm not, just so y'all know, Paul is saying, just so y'all know, I'm not praising the devil or sin or anything like that. I endorse and I delight in the law of God in my inmost self with my new nature. I know what is right. I'm going to preach what is right. I'm going to teach what is right. I know what is right. Verse 23, but I discerned, I recognize in my body, now in my spirit, I'm good, but in this body, in the sensitive appetite, appetites, and wills of the flesh 
what my flesh wants, what my body craves and desires. There's something different going on there, a different law, a different rule of action that is warring against the law of my mind, my reason, making me a prisoner to the law of sin that dwells in my bodily organs. I don't even want to pray. Too tired to pray. I'm too tired to this. I'm just too tired. But sin comes easy because it makes my body feel good. And it could just, it could be the sin of even just talking about somebody behind their back. It could be the sin of anything that you know God just doesn't want you to do. I'm just too tired to say no because my body is saying yes. And to be quite frank, to be quite honest, to be quite open and transparent, The voice of what my body wants is a whole lot stronger than the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, don't do it. Please know this about devils. Devils are pushy. They always force. The Holy Spirit never pushes. He never forces. Holy Spirit leads and guides. Remember, he came down as what? A symbol of a dove. Yes. Yes. Jesus said, the enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion. Yes. A lion is completely different than a dove. Yes. Yes. So, when we are at war in our minds, our entire being can become exhausted. Come on. I know to do what's right, but I know what I want right now. I, I, I know this is wrong, but I still want it. It's a war. It's not a fight. It's a war. It's consistent. It has a lot of working parts. Yes. And I'm just, I'm just tired. Yeah. Then it becomes very easy to sin because I'm tired. Too tired to fight, too tired to do what's right. I'm just tired. Lord, help us all, Jesus. Verse 24, oh, unhappy and pitiable. In other words, I need, I'm I'm unhappy and somebody somewhere need to pity me. I need somebody to pity me. Please show me some pity. I don't feel good, I ain't happy, I have no joy. Now we're talking about an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am unhappy. Uh We're talking about somebody who Jesus showed up. Goodness. Wretched man that I am, who will release and deliver me? From the shackles of this body of death. Because I'm the one, t- I teach it. I know if I keep doing this stuff, I'm going to die. Yeah. I keep sinning. I keep, I'm just tired. Who in the world is going to deliver me? Oh, thank God. Yeah. He will. Through Jesus Christ, the anointed one, our Lord. So then, indeed, I of myself, my goodness, with the mind and heart, serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So that's what happens here. Lord, help us. So let's discover. Now, before we go there, I want to go back. Because some may say, well, I serve God with my mind, but with my flesh, I'm just going to serve sin. But whose law will we obey? Amen. Yes, sir. Hi. Yes. Whose law? 
we do have to make a decision whose law we are going to obey. If you're doing 82 in a 70 mile zone, you're not obeying the law of the land. You're obeying your law that says, my aunt is in the hospital and I don't care. I'm going to get there as fast as I can. So whose law are you going to obey? We have to decide which law we are going to obey. Or we may see the blue and the red lights in our rearview mirror and they say, I'm going to tell you which law you better obey. And that happens in life. Sometimes uh, a lot of people don't know this, but when we see the lights, that is a legal sign that you're under arrest. A lot of people didn't know that. Every time you see the lights, you are now under arrest. So, many, many times, God arrests us, and yeah. we still keep going. Come on. Yes. Come on. He arrests us, and we keep moving. Yes. I need to go. I need to get to where I'm going. No, you need to stop. Yes. Arrest means to stop. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Cardiac arrest means what? Your heart has stopped. Arrest means to stop. See the lights? Stop. Pull over. You keep going. Ooh, you are resisting the stop. The arrest. And that's what we've been doing. Resisting the stop. So let's discover how Jesus delivers our minds, hearts, souls, spirits, and bodies from fatigue, from weariness, from being so tired, from being just worn, slapped out, but still working, still talking to people, still praying, still going to church, still fasting, still treating this one right, still treating that one right, still providing everything I need to do, but I'm still tired. I'm worn out. And I can't even talk to nobody because they're not going to care about me. As soon as I go to somebody and say, you know, I'm just worn out, their response is going to be, child, me too. <laughs> they don't even have time or the heart to say, what can I do to help? They're going to say, sugar, we is in the same boat. So what happens when we are tired? Matthew 26, 41. Jesus is saying this as he's getting close to being tortured and crucified. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane praying and his disciples fell asleep and all this, that, and the other. But he came back to wake him up. And said, man, y'all can't even look, look out one hour? Came back, they were asleep again. So he just said, listen, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. Remember what Paul said? Spirit is willing. I know it's right to do. But my flesh is weak. Golly. The weakness of our flesh can cause us to enter into the temptation offered to us. What happens when we are tired? Jesus said we need to watch and pray so that we will not enter into temptation. The part of us that decides to watch and pray is the soul. Yes. May I present to you that our soul is the part of us that's really tired? Yes. Our soul is the part of us that is really tired. Amen. Amen. Our soul is made up of three major components, our will, what we want to do and what we don't want to do, our intellect, how we think about things, and then our 
emotions. Man. So something is presented to us, some situation, some something, and you're already tired. So something is presented to you, and being that it's presented to you, your soul takes the intellect like, not again. When it rains, it pours. With everything I'm going through now, I got this. That's the intellect. Yeah. Then the will, the soul, decides what it's going to do. I need a drink. I need a smoke. I need a whatever. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need whatever. I need this is good. And then somebody come to you. What's wrong? What do you mean what's wrong? What's wrong with you? <laughs> now you snap it at people for no reason. Oh, because Amen. I'm just tired. Uh -huh. yeah. You better teach up now. I'm just tired. It's the soul. And so then after I decide I, I, my intellect uh, and not my will, this is what I'm going to do. And then emotionally, that's when I blurt out and then I act a certain way. What's wrong with you? Nothing, what's wrong with and Nothing wrong with me. All of that is the soul. Golly, Lord, help us. But what if my soul is too tired to watch and pray? Jesus said, watch and pray. I'm too tired to watch and pray. When our souls are too tired to watch and pray, we enter into temptation and sin. That's why Jesus said, listen, watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation. So what if I'm too tired to watch and pray? I'm going to enter into temptation. Yes, sir. Why do you think Jesus told us to pray, lead us not into temptation? Yes. Because if we're led into temptation, now, God, we're not asking God, God, please don't lead me into temptation. That's, that's not what that is. In the original, it's saying, don't let me be led Amen. into temptation. But what I really want you to do is to deliver me from evil. Jesus, let me explain it like this. Jesus was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness yes. to be tempted of the devil. But Jesus, when presented with the temptation, he presented the word. So Jesus was not led into the temptation. You can be tempted, but don't go into the temptation. So if you watch and pray, you won't be led into it. You get it? Okay. I understand what you're saying, Apostle Wall, but I'm too tired for all of that. Yeah. I'm too tired for every bit of that. I don't even want to clean my house. I'm so tired. My car looks like who did it and why. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm too tired. I know my shirt is wrinkled. <laughs> I know I got crust in this part of my just too tired. <laughs> Almost every time we sin or come short of doing what gives God glory, it's because our souls were just too tired to do right. Even still, there is a consequence for our sinful I'm too tired. I know you're too tired, but you did wrong. And there is still a consequence. Ezekiel 18, 20, the soul that sins, it is the one that shall die. Yes, sir. Our heart doesn't sin. You want breaking news? Our bodies don't sin. No, all right. It's the soul, the deciding part of us. Remember now, our bodies can do nothing without the soul. Amen. I'll prove it to you. 
<laughs> God made and formed man from the dust of the ground. Then he breathed into him life. Then man became a living soul. soul. Yes. Without the soul, the body can do nothing. The soul decides and the body does whatever the soul tells it to do. So it is the soul that sins. It is the soul that's going to go to hell. Remember, our bodies, our bodies become what? Dust. Ashes. It's not going to hell. It's our soul. The part of us that feels. The part of us that senses, the part of us that decides, the emotional part of us. It's the soul that sins. That's why it's the soul that's going to die. And Jesus said, don't fear the one that can harm the body, but fear the one that can put both body and soul into hell. Why? Because this body here is going to be flesh. But when we are resurrected, we're going to have soulish bodies. A bodily form, not of flesh. Yes. Goodness. Yes. The son shall not bear and be punished for the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear and be punished for the iniquity of the son. We're not all holding hands. And I've said it many times. We're not all going to be holding hands standing before Jesus as a family. Let us in. No, no, no. It's individual. Yes. Wow. Individual. Oh, my daddy preacher. I know I'm getting in to hippie CDEFG. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Be punished for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him only. Not upon your family. Your righteousness is only on you. And your unrighteousness will only be upon you. God. Y'all pay attention, everybody. Pay attention. God is speaking here. We need this. The devil would love to distract you because he wants you to go to hell. He doesn't want you to be free from this. This is the time where God is speaking to us. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon the wicked only. Goodness, Lord, help us all. So since our souls are too tired to watch and pray, which results in our souls sinning, because it is too tired to do what is right, what is the solution for our tired and stressed souls. What is the solution? Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. And I, this is important, I will cause you to rest. And I'm going to show you how. Because we know this scripture. That's why we're rejoicing about it. But if, if we knew how to do it, we wouldn't be so tired. Amen. May I share with you, I didn't know how to do it right. until this week. Come, Come unto me. I'll say that for a little later. Uh -huh. I will ease and relieve and refresh your what? Soul. I'm telling y'all, it's all about the soul. It's all about the soul. How do we come to Jesus with our heavy burdens to get ease, to get rest, ease, relief, and refreshment for our souls? How? And now listen here, Apostle Wall, and please don't say the answer is to pray because remember, I'm too tired to even pray. And even if I did pray, I'm too tired to think about what to pray. I don't even want to pray in tongues because as Paul said in the Bible, I don't understand what I'm saying. And when I pray in tongues, 
right now, especially right now, I need to know and understand. Amen. I go and just, just pray in tongues. Just pray. Okay, cool. I pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. I don't understand what I'm saying when I pray in tongues. And right now, I need to know and I need to understand. Yes, Lord. Yes. I don't want to pray. Too tired to pray. Too tired to pray in tongues. I need to know something right now. So, how do we come to Jesus to get that ease, that refreshment for our souls? Next verse, verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you. <sighs> and learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find what? Rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your what? Soul. It's all about the soul. That's what is so tired. Our souls are tired. My intellect, thinking about it. My will, what do I do? Then my emotions, how I express all of it. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. So... Jesus wants us to learn. He said, what? Learn of me. Learn of me. Let me tell you. Jesus wants us to learn what he requires because we've placed heavier workloads on ourselves than what he requires. Yes. Yes, sir. Hi. We put too much on <laughs> ourselves, Rudolph. Too much. Yes. That doesn't mean don't clean your house. Come on. <laughs> That's right, Jesus. I'm going to just lay here and dirt just have to be dirt. No, that's not what that means. Amen. He says in verse 30, for my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh. What is a yoke? I'm going to tell you. It's useful, good, not harsh. It's not hard. It's not sharp, pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. So when we take the yoke of Jesus, our workloads will be light. Then we can do the light work. Amen. What is the yoke? The yoke is what they would put on oxen. And the oxen would go out in the field and, and would do the work and all this, that, and the other. But sometimes they would overwork the ox. Amen. So much so that what will happen is this. They would want so much work out of the ox that they would put a muzzle on the ox. Because the ox is out there working and treading out the corn. So sometimes the ox, because it's it has been deplenished of its energy, yeah. yes, sir. it'll stop and eat some corn. Right. Yes, sir. What did Jesus say? Muzzle not the ox yes. that treadeth out the corn. I just want you to work. I don't have time for you to stop and eat. That's how they used to treat the oxen back then. Oxen means more than one ox. There's no such word as oxes. The oxen. So they would want to stop and eat, but they would put muscles on them so they wouldn't and just work and work and work and work them. That's why Jesus said, listen, my yoke is easy. Ooh, hallelujah. I don't want you out there just working for me, working for me, working for me, working for me. Can I stop? Oh, oh no, go. You got to. Jesus said, I'm not like that. Thank you. You're overworking yourself. Amen. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn how I am. I'm meek. Lowly, you're going to find rest. Goodness. So, 
When we take the yoke of Jesus, our workloads will be light. Then we can do the light work he has for us, which brings rest and refreshment to our previously overworked what? Souls. Because now remember, the soul decides. So everything that you're doing, I got to do this, I got to do that, and I got to do, all of that was decided by the soul. Our souls have been overworking us. Jesus said, I didn't tell you to do all of that. My goodness, Lord. So then when we take his yoke upon us and learn, now we have all the strength and energy we need to watch, pray, Amen. fight, and defeat every temptation all while remaining at rest in our refreshed souls. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Your life work assignment is this. Number one, know that Jesus does not want us to be lazy. A refreshed soul works better. Laziness does not produce rest. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's good. Amen. I can prove it. How many times you lay all day long and, and then and sleep on and off all day and then go to bed that night and wake up and you still, I'm just tired. It's not the bodily rest. It's our soul that's tired. So this is the big point. Ask, Lord Jesus, will you please teach me how you want me to work and what you want me to do so that I can complete what you want done. I'm tired of overworking myself. I'm tired of just doing too much. I've worn myself out and now I don't want to do anything. I'm just tired. I have to go to school. I have to do my homework. I have chores to do. I'm just your soul. I, I didn't witness today. I, I didn't do this. I didn't. Jesus, tell me what you want me to do. A, a lot of this war that's going on is, please hear this because this is something you need to know. There are some things we want to do for God. The devil told us to do it. I repeat, there are things that we feel we're supposed to do to, for God. But the devil is the one that told us to do it. Because th even the devil knows it doesn't take all of that. So the devil wants you to, be, oh, I didn't do this for God. I didn't do that for God. He makes you think it's your own thought. As I've taught before, he will use the word I and my yeah. to make you think it was your thought. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I know what my responsibilities are. Lord, and I just did not please you. Have you ever, this is about to deliver, if somebody's about to get free, have you ever repented for something before God and you wonder why you didn't feel different afterwards? You ever had that? Because you didn't do nothing wrong. Amen. That was the devil that caused you to feel you were wrong. Oh, Lord, I, 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 I did witness the two people, but there were three more people I saw. I'm sorry for not witnessing to them, and you don't feel anything. You're like, Lord, I'm sorry, for real. I don't feel your presence. God's like, no, it's not the absence of my presence. It's the absence of my conviction because I didn't, it wasn't written in your books in heaven that you were supposed to witness to those three people. Why are you repenting for something that I never told you to do? Why are you self-condemning? Wow. Wow. 
And then we, oh, goodness. And now, what does all this mean? Now my soul is tired. Uh, and then sin is presented. The same devil that will say you didn't do enough for God. You should have done this. You should have done that. And get your soul all weak. It's the same demon that will present a sin, a temptation to you and force you. And you're like, well, I'm already feeling bad. I might as well. And then we mess up. Same devil, baby. Same devil. These are the tricks of the enemy. That's why I say, Lord Jesus, will you please teach me what you want me to do? Tell me what to take off of my plate. I got, I got so much on my plate. Take some off. No, I don't, I don't want to displease God. God said, I didn't tell you to put all that mess on your plate to be with. Hey. It's too much. Right. It's too much. Right, right. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I, I, I know God is leading me. How do you know? Did he tell you? Right. Or this is just something you want to do, and you're trying to get God to cosign. That was his hand coming from the sky. <laughs> Just in case you missed. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us need that little laugh right there. So now we know what to do and what not to do. And we'll know even better when we go in prayer. Because God has heard our hearts. The heart knows the soul is tired. Spirit. Our spirits know the soul is tired. Even our bodies, like, you know, I'm not spiritual. I'm just flesh. But I ain't stupid. Something inside of me just ain't feeling right. Even the body knows something else is tired. But it's reflected on me. Y'all get it? Yes, sir. We know what to do because once we get this, we will no longer have the testimony that I'm just tired. I'm just So, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. You're so good. You're so wonderful. You're so kind. You're so thoughtful. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for this big solution to our lives. Father, your Holy Spirit just said to me that every single time we sin, it is because there was some fatigue that replaced energy. There was some tiredness that replaced the motivation to do what we needed to do. Sin is always, always, always an indication that there is some tiredness somewhere. Oh God, help us. Paul said, I know to do right, but I, I, it's, it's just hard. We're tired. Paul is like, this church wrote me a letter. I got to write them back, and it's going to be a long letter. And I got this other letter from this church, and I'm in prison. And it's, it's just, uh, I'm just tired. Father, Paul never really even talked about the fatigue. This is something that you're sharing with us now. Thank you for analyzing our lives. Thank you for knowing us. Thank you for giving us this solution. We're doing too much. And if something is too much, we just simply need to get rid of it. And Lord Jesus, you'll tell us what to get rid of. Why will we talk to you directly? Why is this not directed to our Father God? 
Why is this not directed to the Holy Spirit? Lord Jesus, why are we supposed to talk to you about it? Because you were the one who came here on the earth and you were tempted just like we were tempted, the Bible says. So you know what it's like. You obeyed God perfectly, Jesus, perfectly. Even when people wanted more ministry, you said, come on, boys, let's get in the boat and go to the other side of the sea. You took off and went in the mountain. During a storm, you were sleeping on the boat during the, the hurricane level storm. You were asleep. You knew how to rest. Yes. You only did and that brings a new light to me. You say, I only do what I see my father do. I don't do all this extra stuff. Goodness gracious. Thank you, Father, for giving us your wisdom, your understanding, your knowledge. Now we know what to do and what not to do. And give us discernment because there are things that you'll tell us to do and we don't want to use our own understanding and say, oh, no, that ain't God. And then we miss it. Say, no, it's too much. No, 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 no. Give us sensitivity. The greatest sensitivity that we can have to your Holy Spirit. So we can recognize who is you and who is the devil. Who is your voice and who is the devil's voice. And who's our own voice. Sometimes we don't even know ourselves. So thank you, Father, for it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Now, if you'll bow your heads quickly as we're about to go. If you're here and you say, you know, I've, I left God. I've been so tired that I, I fell asleep on the raft and I have floated way away from shore way away from safety. I am far away from God and I need to come back. Or I've never given God my life and I need to come to him right now. Just right where you are, just repeat after me because you're talking directly to God. Give your life to him. And in order for Jesus to fix us, he has to have our lives. My car needed an oil change. I had to give them my whole car just to do an oil change. I had a slow leak in my tire. I had to give them my whole car just to repair the slow leak in my tire. Maybe you have a slow leak. Maybe you were running on old oil and you need, Jesus needs our whole lives in order to fix anything on it. So give him your entire life. So with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, or if you're listening and watching, if you're driving, you can pray with your eyes open. And just simply say, Father, I come before you now by Jesus Christ who died for me and who you raised from the dead. Raise me now from the death of all my sins. I'm sorry. Come into my life, Jesus. Live your life through me. I give you my life. Thank you for saving me, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God.